Hey guys, welcome to TCR. I'm Sid. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, three of my favorite dual purpose breeds, my personal top three. Um, I know a lot of people have a lot of lists about this, but in my experience, these are my top three in no particular order. So my first is an Orpington. Orpingtons are really nice. They're very friendly, very docile. They do tend to be broody, which is during the season, which is nice because if you're going for sustainability and you don't have the option of doing incubator, you want a chicken that is a good mom that's going to sit on those eggs and do well. Um, they are a very hefty, beefy looking bird. They have a lot of meat on them. So very easy for them to go both ways. So Orpingtons lay about 190 eggs a year and they're like a light brown color. They're a really good dual purpose bird. So they're, they're definitely one of my top three. So my next favorite bird is uh, a wine dot. Now these come in several different colors. I have personally a silver laced wine dot and a golden laced wine dot. Um, they're very friendly. They are some of the most friendly chickens that I've ever had. Um, they don't tend to get as broody, but they lay about 200 eggs a year. Uh, really nice large size eggs that are like a brown or a light tan. Uh, very hefty in size, maybe just a pinch smaller than an Orpington, but they are a very good, lots of meat on their, on their breasts, a decent sized bird. You'll get a lot of meat out of them if you're looking for a real good dual purpose like that, that you could have on your table or in your yard. The Delaware. The Delaware is sort of a dying breed in some ways. It used to be a really important bird in the chicken industry and it's sort of kind of gone away over the years. They are a really large bird. They lay about 280 eggs a year and they are very docile, very friendly. Um, they do go a little bit broody uh, during the season. You can still find a lot of breeders, uh, small breeders that will have them that you can either get eggs from or that you can purchase chicks from. They are, I think, potentially one of my favorites just because I do love bringing more obscure breeds back. And the fact that that one is such a strong dual purpose in my eyes, um, really great bird. Um, and they're, they're pretty, they're, you know, the white, they're all white with a little bit of black markings. They lay a decent size brown egg, um, brown to tan, and uh, they're just a really good, solid, stocky bird, very hardy. It's gonna be spring, so it's time to start collecting your eggs if you have a rooster, and get those eggs settled in your incubator. Now, different eggs take different amounts of time. Chicken eggs are 21 days. Turkey eggs are generally more like 28. Uh, ducks are somewhere between 28 and 35, depending on the breed. Um, so it just depends on what you're actually going to be incubating. You do want to make sure that if you're having egg, eggs shipped in from either a breeder or, you know, somebody that's out of state that you found online, once those eggs get to you, let them settle for between 12 to 24 hours. That'll help with the air pocket. If it gets detached, it'll help it settle so that the egg will have its best chance of making it to the end to those 21 or 28 days, depending on what you've got going on. For the chicken eggs, you're going to want your a nice rotator um, in your incubator. Your humidity you want between 50 to 60 degrees and most incubators will have some area where you are add a little bit of water to it. Um, and then your temperature, you want it to be at about 99.5 degrees pretty consistently and most of them will have some kind of alarm on them. I've got the incubator that we are currently using on our Amazon store as well. Um, this will be my second season using that incubator and I've been pretty happy with it. Um, took a little bit of adjusting because it was very different than the one I had before, but it seems to be working pretty well. So when you're filling your incubator, you do want to make sure that you're, when you've collected your eggs, um, get them as fresh as you can. You don't want them sitting around for weeks and weeks before you put them in your incubator. Um, you do want to put them pointy side down. <laughs> um, that will help the air pocket form and give the chick the best chance for movement. Um, about day seven, they kind of turn in their egg. So you do want to make sure that they're in there correctly. Don't put them with the larger side down. They still might hatch, but it's going to be more of a struggle um, and your hatch rate will probably not be as high. Before the eggs are due to hatch, you do want to take them off of the rotator and just lay them in the incubator. And most incubators that you'll get will have instructions in there about that. So you do want to just take them out. This lets the, the, the chick start doing some movement in there on its own, starts letting it pipe. 
and we'll let it hatch without it being stuck inside of the little cup in the rotator and potentially harming the chick when it's trying to say hello. <laughs> so that's it, my top three birds in no particular order, Delaware, Orpington, and Wyandots. Uh, go check those out if you find any at your feed store or if you see any local breeders or want to get them from your hatchery. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you learned something. Drop me a line. Let me know what your favorite chicken is, what you've had the best experience with uh, as far as a dual purpose breed goes. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you get the notifications.